Good day, fellow investors. Tesla has been the most famous notorious stock on YouTube over the last weeks. And therefore, I'm here with Yao Kai today, and we're going to try to put realistic, probabilistic perspective on the company. Yao Kai, who is a notorious short on Tesla and has been making a lot of money in the last uh, month. So he will, he, I will force him to be the bull on Tesla. So really that we are eliminating any cognitive biases from the investment. I will be the bear and I will try to counter his uh, ideas, his bullish thes thesis. And then at the end, we'll try to put a realistic probabilistic investment scenario counting in both the bull and the bear thesis. Hi, Yao Kai. Hi, I, my name is Yao Kai and I love Tesla. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. So as we said, there has been a lot of talk on YouTube, especially on the channel, the financial education. He is also uh, very positive on Tesla, but I think we should go here back to Kahneman with his book, Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, where there are two systems that attach, affect our minds. System one, that the thinking that seeks a coherent story above all else and often leads us to jump to conclusion. So it seeks to quickly create a coherent, plausible story, an explanation for what is happening, and it really affects our pattern matching, assumptions, and this is what you have to be very careful when it's invest investing, and especially when it comes to investing in companies or stocks like Tesla, which are all about stories in first place. So let's start with Yao Kai, and let's discuss the uh, bull thesis, what is so positive, and we have seen this slide from uh, the financial ed education talking about Maxwell insurance and all the things that are going on for Tesla and uh, how can that be approached from a bullish perspective. So I'll pass the word to you, Yao Kai, and you can start with the first bullish topics. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, so first bullish topic uh, is EV is going to take over the world. Um, it's uh, EV is. Um, cleaner to use, uh, drives faster, less maintenance. You don't go to the gas station, it's cheaper. So EV is gonna replace all passenger cars uh, for transportation. Like ice, uh, internal combustion engine will go to zero. And Tesla being the market leader in that space would capture, I don't know, I'm making up some numbers. You, um, have, to, you have to say will, not would, you are a- will. Bull. Tesla will, yes, <laughs> Tesla will capture um, as much market share as they have now with um, in the future in terms of EVs, but EV is going to be the entire car market, so they will capture, I don't know, 35% of all the entire planet's uh, uh, auto sales. So entire planet auto sales, we have 18 million sales in the US. I think we are to 90 million cars over the world. 30% of that would be 30 million cars. Yeah. So let's say 30% cars, percent, uh, uh, 30 million cars a year, and they would maintain their margin at 25%, however they define it, but 25% margin. Okay, and the so average sale selling price is going to be at, I don't know, uh, let's say 50,000. So that's 10,000 per car times 30 million cars. So, so uh, that's a lot of money. So that's 30 billion, uh, in, uh, 30 billion in gross margin every, gross profit every year. So in such a positive scenario, 30 billion in gross profit. Let's say they are some, there are some costs, marketing, distribution. Yeah, 10 billion. 10, 10 billion in profits. 10 billion in profits, just from the cars. 
10 billion in profit just from the cars. If I attach a normal car maker valuation of five, five. <laughs> that's, a, that's a 50 billion market cap. So how much profit do I make on Tesla if that happens? Well, back then, back in a 300, zero, because they were 50 billion. Okay, now um, they are lower. They're lower, so they're 250. At 50 billion, they were like 350. So, and this will probably happen in 2035 if it happens. Let's say uh, I'm very bullish, so 2025 it will happen. 2025, all the cars that are bought will be EV, so that's six years from now. So I, that's the first. I find myself too ridiculous, but let's, <laughs> let's see, 2025. Okay, so. Even if that happens and everything goes well, then we are at uh, a return on investment of two to three percent per year in six yes. years. But, oh, but should... that's not, that's not yes. the only thing Tesla is good at. Okay. They're also good at self-driving. So they would they would be the first ever uh, robo taxi provider, and that would happen in twenty twenty. And by but the two stories seem to conflict each other because once you have these robo taxis people won't buy cars so either way i'm thinking both would happen because i'm a tesla bull okay so when you buy a robo car you are saying you are buying a car and then you're renting it out to everyone who wants to go it drives automatically so Tesla is going to do the whole thing themselves. They will be the owner of the robo cars, and uh, that's what they said in their lease program. Because their Model Three lease program said that you are not allowed to buy the car after the lease expires. Um, Tesla would keep them for robo cars, for robo taxi. So, seems like the plan is Tesla will use its own cars for the robo taxi. They will manage all that themselves. Okay, so you're not allowed to buy the car, which means it will be a lot of capital intensivity for Tesla. Where are they sure. going to find the money to finance that? It will be the free cash flow coming from selling the cars to, to, the, to everyone else in the, in the world. And simultaneously, they will need a Tesla to take them around in robo-taxis. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, and and the global uh, ride sharing, not ride sharing, the global taxi uh, market at the moment is $100 billion a year. We know that because somebody published a study on it somewhere. I, I read it somewhere. But cap uh, Tesla would capture all of that by 2025. But when Tesla does that, the prices of going around will go much lower. <laughs> <laughs> but according to... Ark invests, uh, Kathy Wood, they would do $1 per mile, which is the same as, as what it is now, but that will happen. So you would get 100 billion in uh, revenue from RoboTaxi by 2025. And everything, and, everybody will drive a Tesla taxi. At the same time. And others, Hyundai, nobody will ever enter into a Hyundai no, taxi. No, no, no. They will all get destroyed because they don't know how to do self-driving. Okay. Doesn't, Either Way Waymo or Cruise, they all did it wrong because they relied on LiDAR and LiDAR is just a failure. You cannot do it. You have to use vision and vision only. Well, right. with, with a couple of radars. Vision okay. and radar, that's the only thing you use, nothing else. Okay, okay. And uh, let me go on that as a bear. So I think what is very important, what could be a really catalyst for Tesla, now I'm turning things around a little bit, is the data collection. I see this autonomous car driving into space and I think that Captain Kirk, fr Kirk from USS Enterprise could you really use the data for his warp ignition development system. How much is that data worth? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worth a lot of money. Um, so Tesla has been driven uh, more than 1 billion miles or 2 billion miles and this is actually a real bull case because for, for um, the way they're doing, everybody else is doing uh, self-driving, you, you don't write rules. You feed this neural net data. Neural nets are basically like really dumb babies. 
um, you tell them enough examples, they kind of figure out uh, what should happen and when. And you don't really know how a baby's brain works. The only way you can teach them is by showing them more examples. You don't tell them, oh, uh, I is singular and is a subject, therefore uh, the next verb should be whatever. You tell them, I speak, he speaks, we spoke, whatever, and then they pick up that pattern. And neural nets are the same. And the, the problem with feeding data is a lot of times you feed them repetitive data and after they've already mastered the idea. So if you keep telling a baby, I speak, I speak, I speak, after the baby knows how to say I speak, it's kind of useless. You need to now stimulate him to say, they spoke. And then he will find, oh, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not supposed to say I speak when I see these people, when I'm trying to say these people spoke, I have to say I spoke, but I don't really exactly know when that cutoff is until you feed me more data. So I tell you, I tell the baby more, they spoke, they spoke, they spoke, given a particular uh, scenario. And then eventually they pick it up. So the Tesla's um, advantage that they have real world data on uh, all kinds of scenarios where you have uh, road construction, you have rabbits running around in, in roads, you have old lady crossing street or, or you know, people fighting in the middle of street, something like that you can't even dream of, but it will happen in the real world and given enough miles, you will see them and they have a good system to collect similar images similar footages from the entire fleet. They'd be like, okay, I see we're getting it wrong. We, we think it's a, um, it's a trash bag in the middle of the road, but it turns out to be two people fighting in the middle of the road. And I should really stop. But the shadow mode or whatever they call it, says we should keep driving and just go through them. But the human actually stopped. So that's a place where you're like, okay, my prediction is wrong. So now they can, they have a system to say, all the cars, tell me when you see things that are either similar to a trash bag in the middle or two people fighting in the middle of a road and send me those images. I'm going to tell you what, when this is right. So okay. that. And what, what's the value on that? So we have the taxes, 100 billion plus 40, what was it, 10 billion in profits? I would, well, because with, if without I, this. If I'm being realistic. This is part of their 100 billion taxi. Cause okay, so it's already the, in the price. In the 100 billion taxi, yeah. Because if 100 billion um, revenue in a taxi, because in order to have that taxi, you have for self-driving. And this thing is their enabler. So in, for them to have self-driving, they need this thing. So it's already accounted for. But if I'm a, be, uh, a, a real bull, I would say that thing is worth one mile, well, 50, 56 cents uh, each mile. because. Um, that's how much IRS values you and presumably everybody else can just drive 2 billion miles as well. So $1 billion, <laughs> 1.2. All right. So, uh, IRS says 56 cents per mile. So presumably I can buy the same thing and do the okay. same thing. Okay. I have 56 cents per mile here in the, for the depreciation for the car, for the car. And then you need somebody to drive it. So let's say when Uber charge gives you, I don't know, two, two dollars a mile. So let's say that two dollars on top of the car, but Uber also, that's already inside the car's depreciation is already there. So two dollars per mile, four billion dollars. That's in the States. And if you that's go to States. that, if you go to Europe here, all inclusive is 24 cents per kilometer. That's 30 cents per mile. 45. But let's say that we're going to hire someone to just drive it around. Taxi, not taxi rate, but Uber rate, right? We can just hire someone to keep driving and do nothing in their entire existence. And you can pay them, I don't know, what, one point something uh, euros a, a mile, probably. That's a good salary, 60 euros per hour. Yeah. So, so let's say that, and then you got 2 billion, 2 billion miles and that's your um, 4 billion in valuation. Okay. That's in addition, that's regardless of this is the enabling thing for the 100 billion, but just oh, I'm okay. accounting it again. And then we have the insurance business. 
how are you bullish on that? So the insurance Tesla is in a unique position to most effectively price uh, insurance policies where they can be cheaper and yet make a profit. Um, so <laughs> um, <laughs> you're not you're not convincing enough. You have to I try mean, harder. Th there is there is a real nugget of truth in there, but um, thing is. For insurance companies, what they really want to know is how you drive and how good a driver you are. So that would determine your probability of getting into a accident and that determines the probability of- Wait, 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 wait. So Tesla is saying that with autonomous driving, there will be no crashes. So there is no need for insurance. Yeah, but you know, people still have Teslas even in autonomous worlds and there is a, they, they still need to make their 5 billion or 10 billion, uh, uh, you know, net margin from selling cars to people that no longer need to drive them. So, so yes, yes but they s if there is less crashes, the premiums will go down. There will be less money in insurance. The margins will go down. So practically we should short the insurance business. That's what I would have said, but I'm a bear. I'm sorry. I'm a bull. <laughs> this is a Freudian <laughs> slip. Damn it. <laughs> Good, good. So we are on the insurance. I don't see value. You see how many billions on insurance? Uh, well, let's say we're gonna, they're gonna take over the entire, um, entire uh, US insurance business. I don't know how big this thing is for the world, probably double that. So you got Allstate, uh, which is selling at what? Um, they're selling at 30 billion. So you, all state is probably like 15%. So another, uh, I don't know, 300 billion for the entire world's insurance company business. And including they, get, their own. they get 30% of that. So that's 90 billion. Um, yes. So that's 90 billion. Okay. In value for the insurance business. If all the other things are going as oh, planned. Yes. Yes. By 2025. So we, really the insurance. Well, this one, it will take longer than 2025 because the insurance. Well, insurance. I'm not supposed to say this, but this one will take longer because insurance business don't churn as fast. So people don't churn as fast. So. But everybody will be buying a Tesla. So yes, it will. Oh yeah, that's true. Everybody's buying a Tesla with a Tesla insurance. Okay. So yes. That, that, okay. But that's about, that's just the market for the new cars sold, not the entire market. So yes, it will take much, yeah. much longer. longer. Yeah. All right. What else do we have? We have Tesla semi production in 2020, Gigafactory, Model Y, Giga production. Uh, demand is quite solid and uh, he would go private and more capitalizing, capital influences. So what about Tesla trucks and why and everything? Uh, so trucks, uh, they're selling the, uh, the class A trucks, right? So they, they typically get in US uh, each month, you sell about 20,000 of these things um, across cycle. That is, mm -hmm. right? you got cycle peak, obviously you got more of these class A. That's actually a good leading indicator. I was watching this stuff because uh, class A trucks are the thing that moves stuff around, which measures um, economic activity. And they actually slowed down this year significantly compared to 17. Um, but anyways, say Tesla captures all that, well, that's actually, that's actually hard. They only drive uh, 500 miles, I think. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. So all the slightly shorter whole ones. Uh, okay. So 50. let's say half of that. Okay. Half of that. So 10,000 of these per month. Um, so that's 100,000 per year. 100,000 per year. And then I don't know how much they can make on it. Uh, each one is probably, I don't know. A million? Yeah, something like that. But in terms of real profits, probably slightly less. Let's say they 100, get a- 100,000. Let's say 100,000 100, times 100,000. 100, right. So, um, so we're looking at 100,000 times 100,000. 
Um, so that's uh, 10,000 million. That's two, uh, 10 billion. 10 billion, yeah. 10 so billion in profits. In profits, that's also 2025. <laughs> no, because it doesn't, it takes longer for, for a truck to, to retire because they're only releasing it in 2020 or 2022. I forgot when they said it. The trucks don't get replaced until they run out, right? So okay, so no, not yet longer. there. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so let's say a future valuation would be 10, mil, 10 billion, uh, 100 or 50 to 100 billion. So that's uh, discounted to now, 2025, let's say, well, a value of 20, 30 billion. Something like that. All right. And then we have still the Model Y. Oh, damn it, the Model Y. My gut tells me Model Y is going to take market away from Model, uh, Model 3, but I'm a bull, so it's going to just create new demand. But the Model Y is, let's say, but the thing is, this already accounted for. We already counted 30% of the entire world's sales oh, to yeah, be yeah, Tesla yeah. cars. And then right, so. uh, what we didn't account in is the solar industry and the batteries. Oh, God. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the solar, uh, the battery uh, chart, and it, it was very funny. Um, there was a chart that shows a new growth engine and you should see the, the energy storage uh, growth, the energy thing actually going down. So like the, the title says new growth engine or something. And the thing goes like that, but I don't know how to value them at because uh, they, they're, they're so small in terms of revenue. So I never looked at, into them. I'm a, I'm a bad bull. I don't know the story. So they are not going to have Tesla battery packs in every house, the tiles on every house and charging energy and... Uh... Oh. Well, you should look at what's going on with the Buffalo Gigafactory. So, and, and it's very, even for a bull, it's hard to attach a valuation to those because they're shrinking. <laughs> they're mm. shrinking by all... Uh, by all the evidence, they're shrinking. So, so it's what we can say. It's practically impossible for them to compete on a global global level with all right, the PV right, developments right. and uh, right. It's and and who can when it comes to mass manufacturing, who can compete against Chinese manufacturers? If you think about like. Car parts, a lot of them are made in China because they're standardized and simple to make. And almost all the solar panels are made in China. But doesn't really Tesla have the best battery technology and everything? They have the... Okay, here's a bull case. Tesla have the best... Uh, like, they have the best battery pack, best engine, best... Um, not engine, motor... Uh, all that is legitimately the best in class at the moment, right? So there, are, nobody managed to reliably keep 7,000 or however, however many cells in good health simultaneously. They did that. And to a very good, very, very good success. But again, not all the time is, good because something just blew up in Shanghai. If you haven't been paying attention, there's a Tesla that just self-ignited in three seconds and there was an explosion and then a bunch of cars got burnt. Um, that's from the batteries. So even Tesla can't keep it uh, extremely well managed. That's why everybody else is using pouch or prismatic. These are much simpler to manage. They do um, have some drawbacks as their energy density is slightly lower than Tesla's because uh, there's no uh, metal constraining these things. They are actually soft. Right? So, but they're much easier to manage. And Tesla's uh, motor at the moment is lighter, uh, probably cheaper to manufacture and higher efficiency and higher power output than every other motor in 
existence that are in cars. But, you know, yeah, you save two kilos. You're not in a racetrack. You save two kilos. It's probably easier for me to lose two kilos than for them to produce a, uh, <laughs> a, a motor that weighs two kilo less. And efficiency is something that's very important. Um, it makes you drive longer, which is a pain point for, for uh, all the EVs. Right? But everything else, higher output. I mean, if you're, in, if you're an old man with lots of money driving a Tesla, you probably don't really want to go three to, you know, zero to 60 in three seconds. Right? Your, your back will hurt. Yeah, so, I, te I tested it and uh, it, your blood goes in the wrong part of the head and it's uh, actually... Yeah, you basically feel like you're lying, going the, the wrong way. So. Yeah, 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 so so that one I don't really ascribe too much value to, but they do have, um, they do have meaningful advantage over all the competitors when it comes to... The, there, is the always, there is always time and with time, all the competitors will go after them and sure. try to get... But we already accounted for this in their 30%, yeah. uh, 30 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, entire world car industry thing. All right. So let's, let's finish this with evaluation. So you are the bull and you said we have a hundred billion for the cab business. Yes. Let's put a hundred billion for the car business. Okay. That's 200 billion. Yes. What else do we have? Well, we have the insurance, which is another hundred billion. A hundred billion. That's three hundred billion. Okay, and then uh, I think that's about it. The, the, the rest I can't really ascribe any any okay. uh, value to. So three hundred billion. Do we have any uh, dilution coming up to that, or they are will be already making everything from cash flow? Uh, they will need they will need a uh, cash infusion for sure. As uh, Elon Musk said. Yeah, he even said it himself. Yeah, Whatever yeah, yeah. Musk said is truth. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we are then at the dilution. So let's say that there will be over the years as they invest and everything. Uh, and plus there are his, his shares that- Oh yeah, he has a huge, yeah. A huge bonus, so. Yeah. When everything of that happens, we are at 300 billion of valuation in 2025 on the double, a double amount of stocks, let's say. Yes. Okay. So we would say the market cap is now 40 billion. We double it to 80 billion. So Tesla could be a triple, if everything goes well, could be a triple by 2025. Yes. So then the stock would be 150 triple from yeah 150 100, yeah 150 160 yeah billions yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay uh, so that's the bull case and the bearish case i would say that simply the debt overwhelms them uh, there is a small recession the production is delayed investors lose 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 patience the debt covenants are breached you have an asset sale, nobody wants to buy it on a fire sale and uh, goes down to book value of 30 20 30 dollars per share. Yeah, I would say a, the, the, on, a, on my valuation, this thing would go to 20. My was 32, so I'm more positive than you, as, even as I mean, a bear. I, <laughs> I think it's 20 because this thing's book value is like 25 and you need a discount for all the chaotic stuff they do. So 20. All right. So we have and enough. The thing, is, the thing is like, yeah, there's all the castle in the sky, but what are the chances that they can, they can actually deliver that? Right. It's, it's like, so One, let's say, let's be positive and let's say 10%. That ten percent. Okay, let's let's be even more positive. Twenty percent. Twenty percent on a triple and eighty percent on twenty dollars per share. Yeah. yeah, because there is no in between here. It's there either no a big. win or a lose. So investors should know, and we can conclude it here that if you are investing on Tesla now, uh, 
you are betting on a 20, 10, 20% chance of a triple in a stock and an 80% chance of a total loss. And what about the final positive uh, from financial education channels that Tesla stock, there is always a snapback after a decline? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it could. I mean, it doesn't change the long-term thesis. I don't really trade around positions, so it doesn't really matter to me. He prides himself being a long-term investor, so whatever snapback doesn't really matter. Shouldn't. But. All right. Perhaps it will be another snap stock or not. We will see. <laughs> All right, so this was a little bit longer video, but I think it really uh, is very important even with, if we make it a little bit entertaining. But there, I see so many people chasing this stock like that they did chase cryptocurrencies a year ago and whatever is the Fed, uh, the normal usual Fed. And that's something people have to be very, very careful. We have made our statements here and we will see whether history will tell whether we are long, right or wrong. wrong. Remember, I'm the ultimate Tesla bull. Yes. All right. And that, <laughs> will, be, that will be used against you uh, whenever possible. In the, in the courts of public judgment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, investors. Looking forward to your comments, but please keep them entertaining as we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Tesla. Oh.